Audi TT Mark 1, tips for storing your TT this winter. Hi all, Andy here and welcome back to the channel. It's October and I am going to be taking the Roadster off the road over the winter. So I figured I would share my tips and tricks for garaging and storing your Audi TT this winter. The reason I'm doing this is I also have the 3.2 and I thought MOT is due, there's also tax to consider. Not only that, but I could make a significant saving on my insurance by reducing it to just off the road cover. So let's look at what's involved. If you are going to sawn your vehicle over the winter, that means you cannot drive it on any public road. You must also store it off road. SORN stands for Statutory Off-Road Notification and it is the DVLA way to know your car is off the highway and not being used. You do not need to tax this vehicle or have it MOT'd, but you will need to do both of these things before you use the car on the road once again. Insurance wise, there is no legal requirement to insure a vehicle while it is off the road. However, I would suggest downgrading the cover instead of cancelling it to cover you for storing it. If there was a fire and you lost it without cover, you would be pretty gutted if it was not insured. Step 1 is fairly straightforward and is storage area preparation. You need somewhere off the road to store it. In a garage or carport is best, as even the fitted covers stored outside can cause paint damage over the winter. A good friend of mine who owns a TT told me about the damage suffered to his paint one winter due to a poorly fitted cover whipping across the bodywork. So use this as a last resort as it does not provide any climate control. I am lucky enough to have space in the garage to store both TTs, but I want to make sure it's clean and tidy before starting. Ensure the floor is free of anything sharp to punch the tyres, particularly if you do not use the garage frequently to store cars. I want full access around the car also. This will allow me to undertake maintenance over the winter and jobs it needs doing while off the road. You will notice I have picked a dry day to undertake the storage. Well that is because it maximises my chance of putting the car away without any moisture on it to sit and fester. The last thing you want is to put away a wet or dirty car, particularly if you were storing it under a cover. I ensure the wheels are clean of brake dust and grime to stop it eating away at the alloys while not being used and the bodywork is free of corrosive bird poop that could damage the paint. I have no idea what bird stomachs are made from but the damage their guano makes to paint is something else. Now for the actual storage I'm going to drive this up to the edge of the garage. Once I get it there I'm actually going to roll the car into position and not use the brakes. Reasons for this will become clear. Get someone to help steer the car while you roll it in or get them to help push. Don't struggle on your own like I did. The reason I am rolling it into position and not applying the brakes or the handbrake, well, I don't want to put the car to bed with the brakes engaged. Pads, discs and calipers have a habit of seizing when left on and stationary for a period of time, so I'm leaving them off. Instead, I'm going to secure the car in the garage with a set of wheel chocks. I feel this is the best way to prevent this while keeping the car from moving. I also go around all four wheels once I have the car where I want it and I put a piece of tape on the side wall marking where each tyre is in contact with the ground. Then I come into the garage once a week, remove the chocks and roll the car backwards or forwards so that the tyres have moved 90 degrees. This allows the car to not rest on the same point of the tyre all winter putting it at risk of perishing. Another alternative to the wheel turning to save the perishing of your tyres is to put the car up on axle stands over winter and take the pressure off. Yes, it will save your tyres somewhat, but it will also prevent you from rolling the car out of the garage and firing it up once a month, which I intend to do and will be discussed shortly. The tyres should also have an additional 5 to 10 pounds of pressure pumped into them while stored to give them better protection against flat spots and perishing. Remember to check this when you take the car out of hibernation or you could be in for a bumpy ride. The car's in the garage, it's got the chocks under the wheel so it's secure, the brakes are not on, so let's look at the steps we now do. One thing you're going to want to do over the winter is keep the battery alive. If you let the battery go completely flat and you leave it, then chances are it's gonna be not so great in the future. So keeping the battery levels topped up to their maximum capacity is essential. Now there are a few battery charging products out there and they're normally referred to as smart chargers or trickle chargers. 
So if you connect your smart charger or trickle charger to the car over the winter, it will ensure that there is a constant supply of power to the battery to keep levels top right up. So the smart charger I went for for the winter is unbranded. I will try and find a link to it and leave it in the video description, but it looks like this. Now the good thing about smart chargers are is they have several settings and they can also repair your battery if they have gone completely flat. So this is quite a good one for its money. However, if your battery's gone completely flat or you don't want to keep it charged over the winter because you feel the electric costs are too high, then there is another solution. Now this bit of kit has got me out of trouble many times over the year and it's called a Top Don jump surge JS1200. I'll leave a link to this as well in my video description and I would now class this as one of my top five tools for the Audi toolbox. Reason being if you've got a completely flat battery you can't get the car started there's no more needing to get jump leads and another car over. Now this little device is charged by USB which is great so you can plug it into your computer or the wall charge it up and it's like a power bank so you can use it to charge other devices but I use this purely for starting the car. Now we've got four cars at home and they don't always get used, so chances are the batteries do run flat. And this little device has got us out of trouble many times. So if you're garaging your Audi this winter and you're not charging the battery constantly, invest in one of these and then next spring, this will jump the car back to life. Hood up or hood down is the question. Well, if you've got a roadster, I would leave the hood in the up position Keep the hood nice and stretched, nice and taut. It stops the hood from shrinking back. If you store it folded down, there is a risk that the material might shrink back. And then when you try and extend it back, you can't quite get it shut. So leave it in the taut position. Even if you don't have a roadster and you've got a coupe, I would also keep the windows in the up position. With the windows in the up position, you are stopping any unwanted visitors getting in the car, such as birds, mice and rats. However, you are going to introduce the issue of damp in the car. Now, a couple of years ago, I kept the car in the garage over the winter. I kept the windows sealed, I kept the roof up. And when I got back in the car a couple of months later, there was what I can class as a layer of fungus growing all over the steering wheel. It had become furry. There is a way you can stop that, and that is by getting a sock or a pair of tights, stuffing it full of cat litter, and that acts to absorb the moisture in the air. Obviously that will get soft over time and you will need to change that, but obviously if you're popping out to look at the car every couple of weeks, you can easily do that. Alternative to that is you can buy a condensation trap from somewhere like B&Q, which you normally have in front of your windows in the house, or the small silica gel packets that come with electrical items, you can use those in the car as well. It helps take the moisture out of the environment and also keep the car free of fungus. I also class winter as the imp time. In my world, imp stands for important maintenance period, or for those of you that love an upgrade, I would class it as the important modification period. The car will be off the road for a while, so this is a great opportunity to undertake those jobs that need more time. Overhauling the suspension, stripping components that need rust protection, or major engine bay work might be worth undertaking, particularly if anything needs sending away saves the heartache of missing valuable time during next year's show season. Every two weeks or monthly if you prefer, I recommend rolling the car out, firing it up and leaving it run until you get it up to temperature for a good 5 to 10 minutes. This will allow the various fluids to pump around and flow. Give it some revs to blow the exhaust through. Give the brakes a good pump to ensure they are working. Try and choose a sunny day so you do not undo your hard work of keeping it dry and free of grime. Then repeat the steps to store once more. It's probably worth noting it is also recommended to keep the fuel tank full before putting the car to bed, otherwise the tank can build up condensation which leads to starting and running problems in the spring. So during these monthly checks what should you be looking out for on your Audi TT? As a minimum I would be checking fluid levels, battery condition, light function, look for any obvious leaks or unusual noises, brake pedal feel, window operation, electric hood operation if you have one and tyre and bodywork condition. So that's just a selection of my own personal tips and tricks for storing my car this winter and I'm sure you probably have many of your own and if you do then please do share them in the comments so other viewers can benefit from your knowledge. 
If you found today's video useful, then please do give this video a thumbs up and also think about subscribing to my channel for more Audi TT tips and maintenance. As always, thanks for watching. See you soon. Take care.